Sunday was fun. It is a great day in Bengals Nation. And welcome to the Rotary Club of Cincinnati. You know, with the wonders of modern technology, we can reach out and communicate with the world. Good thing today, we're bringing a world-class author and program to Cincinnati through the wonders of Zoom. We look forward to hearing from Catherine Hayhoe, the climate scientist and author of Saving Us, A Case for Hope and Healing in a Divided World. Catherine put the four-way test on page 14 of her book. She'll be Zooming with us at 1 p.m. this afternoon. Now, at 1.25, right after Catherine's presentation is complete, we are going to switch to a live feed of the Kansas City Rotary Club. They think that Patrick Mahomes and their Arrowhead Stadium are somehow going to stop Joey B and the Bengals. Well, we're going to have to give them a little bit of Cincinnati cheer to try to tone that down a little bit. Now, we got Hude to help cheer us on, and we've got Eric working the camera from the front so that we can give a huge cheer to Cincinnati, to Kansas City Rotary Club 13 at 125. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down to the floor. Anybody who wants to can crowd around, and we are going to do the Hude chant with all the gusto we can muster right into the camera and try to cheer them out of, out of the, uh, out of, cheer us into the Super Bowl. Now, let's see. Before we have that fun chant, we have a civilized meeting to run. <laughs> I am finding it difficult to rein in the enthusiasm and, the, and all the energy and the, uh, the adrenaline in order to conduct this meeting properly. But we're going to tone it down. We're going to begin. Oh, thank you, Hude. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate that. We're, we're, we are going to do and begin our meeting with the national anthem. So if you would rise and face the flag, we're going to have Stephanie Sheard perform the national anthem accompanied by Kay Atkins. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the starlight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave Ooh, hey, please please remain standing for the four-way test and invocation by Kenneth Cleveland. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you, Father God, to be in your presence one more time, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for the contributions of the Cincinnati Rotary Club. We thank you, Father God, for the services that you allow us to be able to provide, Lord. And we are so grateful, Father God, for the impact that we make in the city of Cincinnati. So, Father God, we want to pray, Lord, that at this time that you would bless uh, this gathering, that you would bless the speaker this afternoon, and you would bless this celebration. And may you bless those that may have prayer concerns or health concerns. And we pray all this in the Lord's name. 
Uh, now let's repeat the uh, four-way test of the things that we think, say, or do. Is, is it the truth? truth? Is, is it, it fair in all concerned? concerned? Will, Will it build goodwill and better friendships? friendships? Will it be beneficial to all concerned? Thank you. You may be seated. Thank you so much, Kenneth. And thank you, Stephanie and Kay, for that rousing national anthem. Now I invite Dan Long to welcome our guests and prospective members. Come on up, Dan. You want me to hold that? Uh, if you'd like to. Sure. Thank you, King Steve. We have six visiting prospects that are here with Rotary. Six, let me think. That's how many touchdowns the Bengals are going to score on Sunday. Yeah. All right. So we're starting out with Carrie Kuznar with Magnified Giving, who is brought here by Kelly Collison. Todd Anderson, the pastor of Hyde Park Community United Methodist Church, brought to you by Jim Young. We have Emil Brown with AMSJ International. He is a food exporter. He is brought to you by Charles Pierce. <laughs> Pat Lehman is with the Friendship Force of Greater Cincinnati. And she's brought to you by King Steve. Noel Beyer with the Neighborhood Allies, brought here by Lydia Steck. And Monty Taylor with the Chamber of Commerce, brought to you by Galen Gordon. Now, as you leave the meeting today, we'll have these handouts, and these handouts are the, is the calendar for the month of February. So please, I urge everyone, we've got some great events. We've got a coffee coming up Tuesday. We've got uh, uh, a, a uh, neighborhood bar crawl that's going to happen in February. We've got some great speakers. So please uh, think of someone that you think would be a good Rotarian and bring them to the meeting. And just as a report card, uh, as you know, our goal this year are 40 new members, and we're up to 22. So I'd put us at about a C to a C plus at this point in time. So please, I get, I get big, big bucks at the end of the year when we hit our goal of 40. 40-22. I think that's what the score of the Bengals game in the Bengals' favor is going to be. 40-22. Who day? Thank you, Dan Long, for uh, welcoming our guests. We hope you will come back and join us again. Thank you for leading the membership development efforts. It's always more fun when we have more people at these meetings. All right, next up, our meeting today is sponsored by the Environmental Sustainability Rotary Action Group. Here to tell you what that is and why it's so exciting is Ariel Miller. Thank you, President Steve. So, good afternoon. I want to um, ask how many people in the room are members of a Rotary Action Group? Oh boy, you're about to learn about something really cool that will be a, a great adventure for you. I am going to do three things in my short announcement. One is to invite you to the meeting of our Environmental Sustainability Committee next Thursday after the meeting to brainstorm and plan the activities here locally for the year. The second is to tell you what is a RAG or Rotary Action Group and why it is so rewarding to be part of one. And the third is to disclose to you some details of the best 
kept secret, our city is an internationally award-winning leader in sustainability. How many people knew that? Oh boy, so this will be illuminating. What is a RAG? Rotary has over 20 Rotary Action Groups, and these are fellowships of people who are dedicated to solving particular problems. Um, the, for example, there's one on peace, there's one on disaster response, there's one on community economic development, and uh, Huxley and a few other members of the uh, club and I are members of the new Environmental Sustainability Rotary Action Group. This has almost 2,000 members around the world, and I'm the editor of their monthly newsletter, which means I get to talk to people in Pakistan, Singapore, Australia, Brazil, Mexico, about the wonderful things that they are doing to tackle the future of our planet and life on our planet. So for me, belonging to this Rotary Action Group is fascinating. I'm learning all the time. Like this month, I learned a lot about air quality monitoring and how Rotary Clubs can do that. But I also have this incredible sense of fellowship with people around the world who know a whole lot more than I and who are leading the way towards wonderful solutions. Yesterday, for example, I went to the Wednesday meeting. Uh, it's a weekly, almost like an e-club, where people talk about best practices. And I met an incredibly inspiring man from the Philippines who has been leading community-based habitat restoration in an area that's been almost entirely deforested. And he has won um, a prize from the UN um, Economic uh, Program and, uh, for his work. So to see dedicated people who are uh, making big achievements in solving real problems in real time uh, just makes me sleep better at night. So you can see on your table there is information about the, uh, this RAG and how you can join it. It only costs $30 a year, and you'll be opening up a world of adventure. Best kept secret. I'm just going to mention about three or four wonderful things about our city of Cincinnati. Did you know that our city was named number one for sustainability by Site Selection Magazine twice? Did you know we were one of 20 cities awarded the Bloomberg American Cities Climate Challenge Grant? We won $2.5 million. Did you know that we have the largest municipal solar array in the country? It's now partially online and will be completely operational by the middle of the year. Did you know it didn't cost you anything? It was financed by a uh, power purchase agreement. And did you know that we have 100% renewable electricity and that this new power plant is going to generate quite a bit of our electric needs for the city and for our homes, uh, probably powering the equivalent of 25,000 homes when it is fully operational. Did you know that our city is about to finish its fourth green plan and that we are ahead of schedule to reduce our emissions by 80% by 2050? Did you know that most of the pollution in the world is caused by cities and cities where the solutions will be? So again, to find out how you can be involved in this exciting cutting edge work, join us next week after the Rotary meeting for the Environmental Sustainability Committee and we'll talk about what we're gonna do together. Thanks. Thank you, Ariel Miller. Those Rotary Action Groups are such a great way of reaching around the globe, across the 33,000 clubs, across the 1.2 million members, and actually getting collaboration beyond our club and beyond our city. Next, we have a word about our upcoming neighborhood coffee from our very own Michael Schatzman, who's volunteered to play offensive line if they need to call him up. <laughs> tell us all about it, Michael. If, if worse comes to worse, Ed Mathis and I will go in as the goal line defensive lineman. So let me tell you, how confident am I about our winning? The game is in the bag. Yeah. 
Alrighty, so earlier today, you received an email from me about our upcoming coffee. Everybody get that? Everybody check your email if you haven't? Okay. So next Tuesday, my assistant, Hude, and I want to let you know about our neighborhood coffee. This time, it's at the Park Poor on Cooper Road in Blue Ash. Very conveniently located, close to Cross County Highway, 71, 75, and Kenwood Road. It's right in the middle of uh, what I guess you could call it downtown Blue Ash. So I went there as on a scouting trip to see what it was like. Coffee was pretty good. Lots of parking, lots of open space, uh, handicap parking available for everybody, easy to get to, and the food on the menu looked really, really good. So I did what I did, what I usually do. I take a picture of what I had. In this case, I had a, a coffee that I liked, a latte, because um, it was really good. Is this thing on? A coffee I liked, a latte. Oh, OK. <clears throat> and I wrote a review of it on a, a Facebook group I belong to called Chowdown Cincinnati. How many people are familiar with Chowdown Cincinnati? OK, great. And it's a, it's a Facebook group where people go in, and they there's no hatred, there's no vitriol. They post only positive things, positive reviews of local eating establishments, drinking establishments, coffee shops, and uh, it's all positive. Somebody writes something negative, <clears throat> you're out of there. So I posted my review about the Rotary Club of Cincinnati going to be holding our, our event there and how much I was looking forward to it, and then put in a plug for Rotary, put in a plug for the place, for, uh, Park Poor, and uh, posted it. Forgot about it. And then I started getting some responses and replies from other Chowdown Cincinnati members writing back. And I was touched by four of the responses. I'm going to read them to you now. And then after that, my assistant and I are going to lead the group in a special coffee chant. So stay with it. The, uh, the participation part of the program is coming up. So the first review that came back to me, uh, these were unsolicited. I didn't ask for them. They just popped up. Um, this is our favorite place for brunch. Uh, their Saturday steak dinner is absolutely amazing. Um, the next review, this is my new go-to place. The chef is really, really good. Every single thing I've ordered, and that's almost everything, is delicious, prepared with real attention to detail, and served by friendly, attentive staff. I can attest to the attentive staff because Lauren, who's the manager of uh, Park Poor, used to work here at the Hilton. And when I said the Rotary Club of Cincinnati, she goes, oh, I know all about you guys. <laughs> I said, you do? <laughs> so anyway, she was very familiar with us. Um, if you get a chance, try the whipped feta slash goat cheese. You'll have my favorite dish so far. And as I say to Chef Arthur uh, frequently, it's the details. Chef Arthur Kurtzman is the chef there. Uh, he gets it all right. All of their food is delicious, one of my favorite spots. And then finally, my most favorite response that I got uh, came um, from Carrie Hendel. And Carrie wrote, love seeing more posts from my other fellow Rotarian in the group. Hello, friends. Turns out she's a uh, member of the Westchester Rotary. And we're now Facebook friends. And I've invited her to join us. I don't know if she'll be able to join us for the meeting or not. Uh, Park Poor is delicious. Well, I've never had the coffee. I've enjoyed lunch, dessert, and wine as well. So there you have it. I'd like to make sure everybody, sh everybody can join us, please. Bring a prospective member. If you're a new member and you know who you are, because I've talked to you about this, um, please come, get to know people in a more friendly situation. And now my assistant, Mr. Day, and I are going to lead you in a little chant. And it goes like this, and then I'll start it. Ready? Who day? Who day? Who day think gonna drink that coffee? Who day? Who day? Who day think gonna drink that coffee? Who day? Who day? Who day think gonna drink that coffee? Who day? Who day? Who day think gonna drink that coffee? Who day? 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 Who day?
Who they think gonna drink that coffee? Everybody! Woohoo! Come on out and see us Tuesday. It'll be a lot of fun. Thank you, Mr. Day. <laughs> Mr. Schatzman, it's always entertaining. Thank you for leading the, new, the neighborhood coffee effort. It's going to be something. <laughs> Not sure what. A few announcements. We had a few club birthdays to announce. We have Brad Glazer yesterday, today John Doherty, tomorrow Tim McKagey, and on the 28th, Paul Carrilla. Happy birthday to our fellow members. <clears throat> Split the pot. Today's winner gets $40, but the revolving pot is up to $1,183. Le that's real dough. Maybe that could fund your tickets to the AFC Championship. All right, I've got a last four digits of 4-3. Nine four. Four three nine four. Do we have a do we have a winner? Four three nine four. Hey! Who day? All right. So close, Patsy, so close. Christy, how many cards we have left? Okay, we still the plot the plot thickens and the pot grows. All right, Jefferson Awards 2023. Nominations are live. We're accepting nominations for the 2023 Jefferson Awards. Open for two additional weeks until February 10th. We plan to honor our Jefferson Service Awardee on Thursday, March 23rd, Bob Herzog from Channel 12 will serve as our MC at the program. Our recipient will be nominated for a possible National Jefferson Award. We ask you to think of individuals and organizations you'd like to nominate for their outstanding service to the greater Cincinnati area. The Cincinnati Enquirer has developed the nomination form which can be found by clicking the link in the Tuesday E-Rays newsletter. Four-way test speech contest. Coaches needed. The four-way test speech contest is underway, and the committee has a request. The local schools need Rotarian coaches. No experience is necessary. It's the last, it's the final two weeks of the competition, and the kids need feedback to be at their best. Lori Quinlivan and Rob Hageman are looking for a few more Rotarians for slots at Walnut Hills and DePaul Crystal Ray. One slot is next Tuesday at Walnut Hills at 3 p.m. If you'd like to be part of this exciting and wonderful youth program, contact Lori and Rob. Lori and Rob, could you wave a hand if you're here? I see Rob Hageman. Just need a few more volunteers to help get through, help these kids get through some of their preliminary rounds of competition. When they, when they come for the four-way test speech contest here, it is such a fun and exciting day. And thank you, Rob and Lori, for putting in the time and energy to make this happen. All right, first Tuesday, Rotary Happy Hour is back. Please join us on February 7th. That's a that's a Tuesday, for our first Rotary Happy Hour of the Year at Nation Kitchen and Bar in Milford. Event starts at 4.30 and speed networking at 5.30. Nation Kitchen and Bar was named Best Burger in Cincinnati by City Beat Magazine. It's also across the street from Little Miami Brewing and next to Cincinnati Distilling, so it could be a triple happy hour. For more information, see Chair Esteban Calle or RSVP in DACDB. 
members in the news. Congratulations to our corporate member, the Deutsch, Smith, and Colangelo Group. They were recently recognized by the Forbes Shook Research as the 2023 Best in State Wealth Management Team. Their commitment to Baird's client-first philosophy, teamwork, and service earned them this best-in-class recognition. Join us in congratulating Rotarian Gino Colangelo and Michael Smith on this outstanding recognition. Good job, guys. Taft Cincinnati partner and Rotarian Heather Hawkins was recently appointed Diversity and Inclusion Committee Co-Chair for the Federal Bar Association Cincinnati Northern Kentucky John W. Peck Chapter. Congratulations, Heather. And an announcement that I spotted just yesterday, and maybe some of you did as well, Rotarian and President-elect Doug Bolton has been named the new president of the Metropolitan Club, a position, a new position for the club. As part of a reorganization, Bolton will assume full financial and operational responsibility for the Covington-based club, aimed at uniting diverse leaders and making a difference in the community. Doug added that his work with Cincinnati Cares and Movers and Makers will continue, and that, quote, Nothing changes about my commitment to and love for the Rotary Club of Cincinnati. The work at the Metropolitan Club gives me a platform to keep elevating Cincinnati Cares and the volunteer ecosystem in Cincinnati, including social venture partners and the Rotary Club of Cincinnati. Doug, you are already friends with everyone in Cincinnati and in Dayton and apparently Northern Kentucky too. So congratulations on the new position. All right, well, we have got Catherine Hayhoe coming online sharply at one. And we're gonna kick things off with an introduction from none other than Bob Beekner. And a, and a thank you goes to Bob. Not only is this, did he help bring this presentation to the Rotary Club of Cincinnati, but he also helped inspire the interest in saving us. You know, many of us have read this book over the past few months, thanks to a generous donation from none other than Bob Beekner. Bob, would you tell us more about Catherine Hayhoe and her work? Welcome, Bob. <laughs> Thank you, President Steve. We are indeed honored to have this world-class climate scientist present to us today. She admonishes us in her book to talk about climate change. It's, it's very interesting. She goes through all the details. She basically says, she knows that climate change is real, she knows that it's man-made, and she knows that we can and, and should do something about it. And I hope everyone here agrees with that, but certainly there are some people that question climate change. That's not the issue. I think the predominance of the evidence is it's there and it's something we need to deal with, and she's a wonderful spokesperson for dealing with this. Just Monday, I learned that high school students who learn about climate change in their science classes, look at it from the standpoint of despair and depression because they see that there's not enough being done. They don't like venturing into the, a world where there's not such a bright future for this planet and they get depressed and, and suicidal. This is a serious issue. We all need to, 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 to accept the fact that we can all do more and I think that following up on what Catherine Hayhoe says in her book about talking about it, I like us to be talking about it on a global basis. The climate is not something that is of local concern only, it is of global concern, and I would like Rotary International to take on climate change as something that is its banner of responsibility. I like to see it at the same level as what's going on with polio. 15 years ago, when I joined the Rotary Club, polio was the number one issue in terms of eradicating it, and it was something that was, was, a, was very important and, and, frankly, exciting to me because when I was born now 75 years ago, my mother had polio, and I came real close to not being able to join all of you in this wonderful adventure we call life. 
So eradicating polio was, was absolutely an outstanding idea. Fifteen years later, we are still eradicating polio. How many people are affected by polio out there? It's less than 100. How many people are affected by climate change? It's now 8 billion. So we really kind of need to think about what we can do as Rotarians, not just locally, but I'd like to have us have the energy and the inspiration and the vision to inspire Rotary International to be talking about this and how we can, can share information, how we can share a vision of how this world can change. And I think it's a very important part of what we have in, uh, the ability to do. Now, Catherine says in her book, She's not a Democrat. She says, I'm a Canadian. She also says she's a Christian. And she lives her faith by loving others and by loving this planet. And by loving the planet, she really has a concern for what the world will look like to future generations. And she's working very hard on doing that. She really is concerned about her, her own carbon footprint because she doesn't want to be traveling and, and uh, taking up uh, the jet fuel and all the things that she could do and, and uh, is certainly entitled to do. But she, so that's why she's appearing by Zoom before us today. So we're indeed uh, blessed to have her with us. Um, Steve, is what are we doing here in terms of how much more time I have? <laughs> One minute. One more minute. Okay. So. Let me just share that the, 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 I hope that those of you that have the book will read it. It's a, a, a wonderful expose on what the status is with, with climate change and on a worldwide basis. This is a very wonderful author and she really presents her ideas in, a, in, a, in an ex exemplary fashion. I think the thing that I take from the book is, is just how she really has uh, answers for all kinds of things in terms of the people that are dismissive, the people that are, are charged up and want to do a lot. And, and she even talks about how to start conversations on climate change. So I think that it's a, a real uh, uh, kind of a cookbook approach for how we all can learn about what's going on in our climate and how we can all engage one another in conversation. And I hope that we'll, we'll take that to heart here in the Rotary Club because we can, in, can, in fact, can have some conversation about Rotary, uh, about climate change on a, on a regular basis. And I think that that's a great way to springboard into what maybe we can do on a global basis. So Catherine is with us and I am finished with my introduction. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. It is wonderful to be with you, not in person, but virtually. And I want to begin by asking you a few questions, if you don't mind, and then you will get a chance to ask me some. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you. And I'm going to ask you to go ahead and take out your phone. Now, I know this is kind of unusual. You can turn off the ringer while you're at it. But if you don't mind taking out your phone, and you can take a picture of this QR code and it'll send you to a website, or you can type in p-o-l-l-e-v.com slash Catherine in your browser. The only trick there is you have to spell Catherine right. It's got two A's, K-A-T-H-A-R-I-N-E. The easiest way is to just pull up that picture in your, in your camera and it'll just send you right to the website. And when you do that, I see a couple of hands up still, so I'll just give you a minute here. Just open your camera app, and if you focus it there, it should send you to the website. And I want to ask you a question. And the first question I want to ask you is, just a second here, uh, how long have you been a Rotarian? Are you just visiting? You're a guest? Under a year, less than five years, less than 10 years, and so long that you can't remember. Oh, we've got a lot of answers coming in here. This is great. Oh, you've got, you got a lot of people who have been members so long they can't remember. That's wonderful. So it looks like 37, wow, 40% of people are members who've been there many more years than 10 years. You've got a good percentage of guests and then a good distribution between 10 years, five years, and under a year. All right. That is a fantastic, fantastic range. All right. Now that you've figured this out, I'm going to ask you a question that requires a word. 
you have to give me one word, not two words, just one word, any word. And it's an answer to this question. I just want to get to know you a little bit more. If you could describe, describe what you do in one word, what is it? What do you do in one word, any word, but only one? Oh, that's a great person. Somebody listens, inspire, connect, serve. That's a good one. Community, engagement, relationships, education, volunteer, counsel, retired, family, finance, entrepreneur. This is so interesting, isn't it? This is a picture of your club. Look at these words that are emerging. You can see why I picked only one word, right? This is a wordle. And the more people who say that word, the bigger the words. So you are a community that is family focused. Family focused helps, serves, leads, and protects and, and uh, connects. I love that. All right, now, from now on, you can ask me questions. So I'm gonna give a short talk, and then I'm gonna take your questions at the end. And at any point in my short talk, you can put in your questions, and you can upvote the questions you're most interested in me answering, because I won't be able to answer all of them. There's a lot of you. So at any point while I'm talking, you will have this on your phone, and if you have a question that occurs to you as I'm talking, you can put your question in here. You can use as many words as you want. It doesn't have to be one word. But here's the fun part. I'm going to ask for your help. As I go along, you can sort of look at the questions other people are posting. And I want you to give a thumbs up to the questions you are most interested in. And we are going to be picking the top questions at the end to answer based on your votes. So this is going to be open the whole time. And you can see it anytime you want on your phones. But here we go. I'm going to be talking to you today uh, about what I've learned through listening to thousands of people, thousands of conversations, people who are young, people who are old, people who are business employees, people who work in the healthcare industry, people who work in education, people who work in religious organizations. Talking to thousands of people I've realized that every single one of us has a role to play and every single one of us has a reason to care when it comes to climate change. Now, I'm a scientist. So starting with the science, I can share with you that we have never seen this much heat trapping gases going into the atmosphere this quickly in the history of the planet. This planet is really old, but we study, we climate scientists, we study the planet in the past and we know that what we're doing today digging up and burning coal and gas and oil which produces heat trapping gases that are building up in the atmosphere wrapping an extra blanket around the planet which is causing our planet to run a fever we have never seen this happening before we have seen natural cycles we have seen volcanoes we have seen changes in energy from the sun we have seen all kinds of natural factors we've seen ice ages We've seen hot house earths, but we've never seen it happening this fast. And it has never happened with 8 billion people on the planet. And that's why this matters. We, we're seeing that this fever that the planet is running is affecting us where we live. I'm really sorry I don't have this map for Cincinnati. But for Columbus, we know that thanks to the fact that it's an urban heat island, because of all the buildings we've been created, it can be up to 24 degrees hotter in the city than in rural areas. And I imagine Cincinnati is similar. And as our temperature warms, it's taking this effect and it's making it worse. We know that temperature across Ohio is increasing. It's, our, it's warming by as much as two degrees Celsius a decade. We know that some of the fastest, hottest warming cities are in Ohio. We know that if you live in Cincinnati, if we don't do something about climate change, a summer in Cincinnati is going to feel like Southern Texas. I live in Dallas. It is not Southern Texas, but it's still so hot in the summer that I typically go home to Canada for quite a few weeks, as many weeks as I can. 
I come from just across the border from you in Ontario. It isn't just about the planet, it's about what's happening to us. And we're seeing more lake effect snow than we used to, why? Because it isn't cold enough for the lake to freeze, but it's still cold enough to snow. We're seeing increases in toxic algae due to pollution runoff in warmer water. And all of these changes are affecting the water we drink in Ohio and around the world. It's affecting the air that we breathe in Ohio and around the world. Did you know that 10 million people die prematurely every year from breathing in the air pollution from burning coal, gas, and oil? 300,000 of those in the US. It's affecting the food we eat. $5 billion worth in crop losses every year since the 1980s due to a warming world. It's affecting our infrastructure which is built for a world that no longer exists. How do we know what the 500 floods, your flood zone is? Well, we, we draw it based on where the floods happened in the past, but those floods are happening stronger and more intensely today. And now we're having, you know, the city of Houston had three 500 year flood events in three years. That's no longer a 500 year flood event. Yet our infrastructure, our buildings, our roads, our sewer systems aren't prepared for the changes that we're seeing. We're seeing this all around the world, not just where we live. And so that's why I'm absolutely convinced that this isn't about saving the planet. The planet doesn't need us, we need it. We are the ones who depend on this amazing planet we live on for every breath we take, for the water we drink, for the food we eat, for all the materials we use, it all comes from this planet. And so when we turn this around and we realize it's not about saving the planet, it's about saving us, all of a sudden, we have every reason we need to care because we are someone living on this planet that depends on its resources. You don't have to be an environmentalist. You don't have to be a climate scientist. You certainly don't have to be on one side of the political spectrum or the other. Whoever you are, wherever you live, whatever you care about, climate change is already affecting your life, whether you realize it or not. And when it comes to the risks we confront, it is literally about all of us. It's our civilization that's at risk. So often we say, well, if that's the case, then if people just knew, wouldn't they spring into action if we just give them more information on temperature and thermometers and global change? Well, we scientists have been talking about this for a very long time. Do you know how long scientists have been talking about how much warmer the world would get if we keep on digging up and burning coal and gas and oil? Since the 1800s. Yeah, I didn't mean the 1980s, the 1800s. That's how long scientists have been sharing the facts that I just shared with you. What's been happening is not that we need more information. It turns out that most people in the US are already worried. But half of us feel helpless and hopeless and don't know where to start. And as a result, only 8% are activated. The biggest problem we have is not people not understanding the information is that we don't know what to do. I mean, I turn it, change my light bulbs, right? I recycle. And then I hear about, you know, an airline running 300 empty flights just to keep their gate assignments. And I'm like, so what's the point of what I'm doing, right? That's why we feel hopeless and helpless and we don't know what to do. What are the two big challenges that are stopping us? Not lack of knowledge, but rather connecting our head, knowing, hey, it's real and it's serious, connecting our head to our heart. Why does it matter to me personally where I live? And then connecting our heart to our hands. What can I personally do about it? So I have some proof of this. Let me show you this. We humans are prone to something called psychological distance. In other words, we're very good at thinking about risks as being far away in time. You know, I don't exercise enough now, but I will in the future. I might not be saving enough money now, but I will in the future. Um, you know, I'm not eating the way I should, but I will in the future. Or, you know, that just matters to those people who live over there. It doesn't matter to me. Or, you know, that just, it's just not relevant to me. It's not on my radar. We do this with what we eat, our health, our finances. We do this with all kinds of things, but you know what? We do it with climate change too. So 
these are some public opinion maps from the Yale program on climate communication. They're asking people a bunch of questions and I've actually highlighted Hamilton County for you here. Um, but this is every county in the US and if the county's orange, it means that more than 50% of people said yes to the question and the darker orange it is, more people said yes. If it's blue, it's less than 50%. So across the country, 72% of people say, sure, this is happening. And in Hamilton County, 74%. And people say, yeah, it will harm plants and animals. Where's the psychological distance there? They're not human species, so not relevant to us. It will harm future generations. Where's the psychological distance there? In the future, right? In time, not now. Um, it will harm people who live in developing countries over there, not here. Okay, so so far we're tracking. It's real, it will affect plants and animals and people in the future and people who live over there. And then they ask this question. Do you think it will affect you? Look at that. That's what I'm talking about. We have not connected our head to our heart. We have to talk about how it's not just in the future, it's now. It's not just over there, it's here. It's not just this abstract global average temperature, it's the heat wave that's been stronger or the flood that's got more rain right here in the place where we live. And we also have to talk about what real solutions look like. Because people are willing to change if they feel like what we do makes a difference. But most of us today, we feel like what we do doesn't make a difference. And if it doesn't make a difference, why do it, right? None of us has enough time or money to waste on things that don't matter. So how do we tackle psychological distance and how do we show people what they can do, which the word for that is efficacy or empowerment. It turns out that we need to start with the one thing we're not doing. And what is that? Well, remember I left off at this map. Do you think it will harm me personally? And people said no. There's one darker blue map. Do you ever talk about it? Do you ever talk about it at least once in a while? And most people say no. And here's the connection. If you don't talk about it, why would you care? And if you don't care, why would you ever do anything about it? So as strange as this may sound, I'm absolutely convinced that the catalyst for change is talking about it. Sorry, I can't hear you. Oops. Go on, Catherine. Oh, okay. <laughs> There's somebody else popping up on Zoom giving a talk, which is kind of a new thing. I haven't had two talks going on at the same time. All right, so don't forget to put your questions in. I'm just going to be talking for a few more minutes here and then we're going to be taking your questions. So you might be saying, well, I'm not a scientist. So, you know, what am I supposed to do? You want me to talk about like satellites and thermometers? No, I want you to talk about what's happening where you live and what we can do to fix it. I want you to talk about how climate change is affecting things that we care about and what we can do to fix it. And you might say, well, how am I supposed to know that? Well, I have some help. I actually have a free newsletter. So if you go to my website, which is just my name, katherinehayhoe.com, you have to spell it with two A's, katherinehayhoe.com. If you go to my website, you can sign up for my free newsletter and every week you get a newsletter. We don't use your email for anything else than that. We just send you the newsletter. It's got a piece of good news, a piece of not so good news because we need to understand the risks and one thing that every normal human being can do about it. So how do we talk about this? We can talk about how it affects our food, our water, safety of our homes, the economy, our health. But a couple months ago, I was talking to a group in Iowa and they said, okay, but we st I still don't get it. How do I talk about polar bears where I live? I said, well, unless there's a secret population of polar bears in Iowa, you don't. We need to talk about what we care about. And when I'm here in Texas where I live, and I'm talking to Jack, who hasn't had a decent uh, rain year since 2005, I talk about farming. If I'm up on Lake Erie, I talk about the green tide. If I'm in central Ohio, I talk about the, what happens after floods. 
I talk about air pollution. I talk about what's happening, where we live, and I talk about what we can do to fix it. I love talking about the fact that, guess what? There's countries that are actually acting, including the United States, with the Inflation Reduction Act. I talk about how there's businesses and corporations that are acting, like Walmart and Apple. I talk about how there's communities that are acting, churches, community centers, army bases. I talk about how there's young people who are speaking out. I talk about how my own life is changing, how I love to eat local, how great it was to have a plug-in car during the pandemic so I didn't have to go to the gas station very often, how much money we saved when we put our solar panels in or when we just replaced our light bulbs. I love talking about what's happening around the world where there are 700 million people who do not have access to electricity and solar and wind energy is changing their lives. I love telling those stories. And what happens when we tell these stories, we realize the giant boulder of climate action is not sitting at the bottom of an impossibly steep cliff with only a few hands on it trying to push it up and it's never gonna budge an inch. When we tell these stories of what's happening in Cincinnati, what's happening in Ohio, what's happening in the Midwest, what's happening in the US, what's happening in India, what's happening in Mozambique, what's happening in Texas, we realize that giant boulder is already at the top of the hill. It's already rolling down the hill in the right direction. It already has millions of hands on it. And if I add mine, and if you add yours, and if we use our voices to encourage the people we work with, to encourage the people we live near, to encourage the people we worship with, to encourage the people that we walk our dogs with, to join us, that boulder will go faster. Because like I said at the beginning, to care about climate change, you do not have to be a certain type of person. If you're a parent, you have every reason to care. If you're a business owner who wants a healthy, stable economy, you have every reason to care because climate change is definitely affecting supply chains. If you work for the city, you have every reason to care because our infrastructure is built for a planet that no longer exists. If you care about outdoor activities, if you farm, if you're just a human being living on this planet, whoever you are, you have places you love, you have things you love, you have people you love. Every one of us has that and that is why we care about this issue because we all need clean air to breathe. We all need water to drink, we all need food to eat, we all need a safe place to live. We all want a better future. And if we don't fix climate change, we won't have that better future. But the good news is we have the ability to do so. So my only question at this point is, what are we waiting for? Catherine, hey ho, thank you so much for sharing your passion about climate change and, and making the world a better place. We do have time for a question or two, maybe off of your best, most upvoted list. Would you like to take it away? I absolutely would. I'm going back there and I can put it on the screen so it is not too late if you wanna take a very hasty look at that list. We are going to see it just here in a minute and you have not let me down. We have a ton of questions on this list. Let us take a look at them. Okay. Wow, coral reefs. Oops, coral reefs just got edged out. That's good. I'll answer that one first. What is the status of coral reefs worldwide? Well, it turns out that marine heat waves are the number one threat to coral reefs that causes them to bleach and to become sick and even die. And coral reefs are the nursery of the ocean. But here's some work that gives me hope. I am the chief scientist for the Nature Conservancy. We work in Ohio, in every state in the country and around the world in 79 countries. And one of our emerging research areas is identifying super reefs. Super reefs that have the ability to survive marine heat waves and figuring out how to grow those super reefs. And that is part of what gives me hope. How do we make non-believers believe if they have a, we have a critical issue if they don't believe in science? Well. Here's the thing, it isn't that they don't believe in science. I know what they say. Yes, I know, I hear it every day. It's that they don't agree with or believe that they can support the solutions. If they don't think they can go along with the solutions, it's easier to say, oh, it's not real than to say, sure, it's real, but I don't wanna do it. Because nobody wants to look like a bad person. Nobody wants to look like an idiot. 
So it's much easier to be like, oh, those doctors or those scientists are just making all that up than to say, look, I just don't want to do it. So we have to understand that if we try to hammer them to believe in science, that's not going to fix the problem. The problem is they don't think they can go along with the solution. So what do we have to talk about? We have to connect the head to the heart and to the hands. We have to talk about why it matters, figure out what they care about, connect the dots, and then bring in positive constructive solutions. And I would be remiss if I didn't leave you with the fact that I have a TED talk that's all about exactly how to have these conversations. And like I said, I have that book, Saving Us, that is also about how to have these conversations. Plus I have my newsletter that has all the information you can use in your conversations. So don't worry about the 8%, you know, your uncle, your neighbor, the person who keeps posting on Facebook, it's a hoax. That's just 8%. 92% of us are not dismissive. We might have questions. We might not be sure about the solutions. We might not understand why it matters. Don't waste your energy on the 8%. Focus on the 92% who don't know why it matters and don't know what to do about it. And that's where our positive, constructive conversations can happen. The reason I wrote my book, Saving Us, is because I've done this for years. And I started to notice after a number of years that the number one question that was rising to the top was what gives you hope. And so that's why I wrote my book to talk about what gives us hope and what gives us hope is when we act and we see other people acting. That's what gives us hope. Catherine, thank you so much, thank you so much for your presentation. <laughs> Many of us in this room have enjoyed your book, especially enjoyed your presentation. We are also big fans of page 14. You know, that's where you wrote the four-way test. You know, in, as a token of the Rotary Club of Cincinnati's appreciation for your respect for the truth and for making the world a better place, we're going to send you this in the mail. This is a Rotary Club of Cincinnati coin, and on the back is the four-way test. That's how we think we're going to make the world a better place through um, the, the seven areas of focus, including environmental sustainability. Let's give another round of applause for Catherine Hayhoe. <laughs> Catherine, you are welcome to stay on the call because we are passionate about saving the environment, but we're also passionate about our Cincinnati Bengals. I got to give a shout out to Sarah Patterson and the uh, Rotary Club of Kansas City for making this fun week so much more fun. Can you hear us, President Eric? Can you hear us? Oh, man, you're alive. This is great. Well, thank you for being on and joining us. It's exciting to uh, get to to be live in Kansas City Club 13. We are Cincinnati Club 17, so who day? We, we are very interested in hearing your Kansas City chief cheer and spirit coming through live here in downtown Cincinnati. Okay, are they ready? Yep, here we go. We can hear you. 55. <laughs> We can't hear you. You might want to turn up the volume. Red. Oh, they Hey, the wonders of Zoom. We appreciate your cheering. That looked great. We didn't hear it all, but hey, everybody, let's let's give a cheer for Joey B and our Bengals. You know, Arrowhead Stadium is pretty loud, but we got to tell you, if you don't hear this chant in your stadium, you're going to hear it coming to you from Cincinnati. Are you ready? Who day? Who day? Who they think gonna beat them Bengals? Who they? Who they? Who they think gonna beat them Bengals? Nobody! <laughs> President Eric. President Eric, can you hear me? 
I hope you heard that because we had a great cheer here. Now, so in the spirit of friendly competition, you know, they're, they're, however the game ends, there's, it's not going to be fair to all concerned. But we're, <laughs> but we're hoping that there'll be a way to build some better friendships. So here's the proposal. You know, the winner is going to get to enjoy the Super Bowl. The losing club should be willing to cheer them on next week live on camera again. Are you with me? All right, that's awesome. Hey, Eric, we can't quite hear you. I'm not sure why we're not hearing you, but we'll see if we can turn something on. Is there anything that I need to do over here, guys? It's on their end? Okay, Eric, I think you might be muted. <laughs> this is the story of my life in 2020, right? Like, <laughs> Steve, you're hey, on. Hey, can you hear us now? Yes, we can hear you now. Awesome. Are we starting over? <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, we did our cheer. If you guys uh, if you have anything to say, you're welcome. You have the open mic. Three, two, one, go. Uh, Kingdom. Kingdom. We, we weren't sure if you heard it the first time, so we just wanted to make sure we got that through. Thank you, Thank you Kansas City Club 13. Thank you, Kansas City Club 13. Have a great meeting. We'll see you at Arrowhead, and uh, we'll see you next week one way or the other. Thank you. Who day? Who day? Thanks for being here and helping cheer things on. Just to, two last announcements. We have a membership develop, development meeting on the third floor in the Julep Room. Next week, we have a very appropriate meeting. We have Bra Brett Betts. Dr. Brett Betts is the team physician for the Bengals. So hopefully we're cheering a victory with Dr. Betts. He's going to be here uh, live. <laughs> hopefully he's not too busy. That's right. Thank you all for a great meeting. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Mike. Meeting adjourned.